Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome you to CLIglobal.com. This is our monthly presentation for critical limb ischemia patient. My name is Fadi Saab. I'm an interventional cardiovascular specialist at Metro Health Hospital in Wyoming, Michigan. I would like to share with you a very interesting case that highlights the importance of alternative uh, access in patients with critical limb ischemia. Uh, we will touch on multiple aspects during the procedure from um, traditional access to alternative access to the value of stage intervention and ultimately pedal loop reconstruction. We hope you enjoy this demonstration. So this is a 79-year-old male that presented to us from another state. He has multiple risk factors, including hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia. He also has a significant history of ischemic cardiomyopathy with an EF of 35%. The patient has a history of femoral popliteal bypass that occluded eight months post-procedure. This happened in the year 2013. Since then, the patient has been complaining of rest pain on and off until recently, two months prior to presentation, he developed a wound involving the medial aspect of the left foot. He also developed a wound at the distal toe that just healed. As you can see here, there is an ulcer involving the medial uh, anterior aspect of the left foot. The great toe is not projecting very well. However, there was a small ulcer involving uh, the distal tip of the great toe. In the right upper corner of the screen, you see the remnants of the bypass graft that was uh, performed in the year 2013, and it's known to be occluded. Also, in the left lower corner, you see some uh, uh, ulcers suggestive of uh, venous disease in this patient. This is the diagnostic angiogram that was sent to us from the referring institution. And you can see that the patient has some aortoiliac bifurcation disease. And uh, you can see in the right lower corner that the SFA is completely occluded. In fact, it appears that the patient uh, SFA has a high takeoff with a patent profunda. The diagnostic angiography essentially shows that uh, there are collaterals that supplying what appears to be a distal tibial vessel. It is not clear to us which distal tibial vessel it is. It is possible to be the posterior tibial artery. I would like to take a moment to discuss the treatment options for this uh, 79 year old gentleman that presented to us with critical limb ischemia, a Rutherford class 5. Also, the patient is complaining of breast pain. These were the treatment options that were offered to the patient. Uh, the first option was single vessel tibial bypass, synthetic uh, tibial bypass uh, that was uh, offered to him. His surgeon thoughtfully spoke to him about uh, the rates of occlusion and the possibility of a bypass graft remaining open. The second option was unfortunately an above the knee amputation and the third option was, was also uh, has a grim outlook and, um, and uh, was not sure if it's feasible would be a plantar bypass. Keeping all those options in mind, you know, uh, it was a decision between the operator, uh, the referring physician, and the patient himself that uh, w they should not pursue any of those options and uh, see if there is any possibility for endovascular revascularization. At this point, I would like to present uh, this new uh, alternative access that uh, we um, have been utilizing in our practice quite frequently. We named it after Dr. Andre Schmidt. Um, uh, he's one of the pioneers with peripheral vascular disease and critical limb ischemia in Germany. In 2012, he presented a paper where he described accessing the popliteal artery uh, at the P1 segment in the patent reconstitution uh, um, of a vessel. Essentially, he will access the patent segment uh, uh, after the reconstitution of the CTO within the P1 segment of a popliteal artery. The reason we describe this as a modified Schmidt technique, um, since we utilize extravascular ultrasound in accessing and uh, uh, delivering therapy, uh, the next step was uh, for us to access the occluded uh, chronic total occlusion segment of the vessel itself. As you can see on the diagram, the area where we highlight as a Schmidt axis area is essentially an occluded uh, superficial femoral artery, um, uh, proximal popliteal artery. We can visualize that vessel on, under on the ultrasound, and um, we will show that in the next slide. This is a slide that essentially describes to you our thought process in terms of accessing the occluded chronic total occlusion segment. The top of the screen or panel A, essentially you see the needle um, entering the calcified portion of the occluded superficial femoral artery and a wire through it. And this is essentially how it looks in panel B under ultrasound. You can see the distal CTO cap with the acoustic shadowing there. Uh, the, uh, the left of the cap is essentially an occluded segment of a vessel. 
to the right of the screen is a popliteal artery where there is some flow related to reconstitution through collaterals. And to the left of the screen, obviously, uh, there is a common femoral artery. This is another view uh, highlighting uh, how we accessed the occluded segment of the superficial femoral artery under ultrasound guidance and how the needle looks uh, with the wire through it. We have attempted in the past accessing the vessels under fluoroscopic guidance. Uh, is certainly feasible. However, we prefer to use ultrasound because it can guide our wires and equipment um, in, a, in a better fashion. In this slide, um, you see to the left of the screen uh, the appearance of uh, the needle under fluoroscopy with an 0 and 8 wire. In this case here, we're using a V18 wire made by Boston Scientific. The metal panel essentially shows the needle under ultrasound accessing the anterior wall of a superficial femoral artery with the wire through it inside the occluded vessel. And to the right of the screen, you can see the 0 and 8 wire being advanced under fluoroscopic guidance all the way to the common femoral artery. This is another image of uh, essentially after we access the occluded vessel, in this case was the occluded superficial femoral artery with no meaningful blood flow through it, we decided to proceed with the placement of a four French precision sheath. This sheath is made by Terumo um, and it has a microdilator that is uh, you're able to advance over an 018 wire. The V18 wire has a supportive body and is able to accommodate a four French sheath. This is an important slide. What you see here is essentially a roadmap uh, created by um, an anterior in, uh, contrast injection from the contralateral side. And you can see the takeoff of the deep femoral artery, the profunda, and you can see the flush occlusion of the SFA. A few points that are important here to know. Uh, the first thing that you see here is essentially this is, this is the Navicross catheter. Navicross catheter is an 035 catheter that's made by Terumo. And through it, you see an 014 wire. This 014 wire here is uh, the command wire. It's made by Abbott. Uh, what the operator is trying to achieve, in this case, what I was trying to achieve is essentially trying to access at the medial portion of a superficial femoral artery uh, away from the deep femoral artery. This is important because it will allow the plaque to shift away from the deep femoral artery. After we crossed into the deep femoral artery with the 014 wire. We advanced our Navicross catheter and now we are in the common femoral artery as you can see uh, on the right panel of the screen. Now at this stage what you see here is the Navicross catheter that's uh, being advanced in a retrograde fashion from the occluded segment of the distal left superficial femoral artery and there is a Navicross catheter that's advanced from the contralateral right common femoral artery and what we're trying to do is advance an 014 wire, a command wire, from one Navicross catheter to the other Navicross catheter, or what we describe as a tunneling technique. So let's take a moment and review exactly what we did here. Essentially what we did is we connected the right common femoral artery 7 French destination pinnacle sheath to the 4 French superficial femoral artery uh, sheath that's inserted in the distal left SFA occluded vessel. We were able to floss a wire from the right common femoral artery to the left SFA axis. Here we have a decision to make. Essentially, we have to uh, treat the inflow, but also we have to uh, make sure that we are achieving an adequate outflow. I have mentioned earlier that we think that the distal posterior tibial artery was patent. This was confirmed by uh, extravascular ultrasound where we were able to, sh to see that there is minimal blood flow in the distal posterior tibial artery. What you see here is ultrasound guided axis of the posterior tibial artery. In the left upper corner, this is the short axis view. In the right upper corner, where you see the needle in the, in the long axis view uh, uh, puncturing the anterior wall and the posterior wall. And as we release the needle from the posterior wall uh, of the posterior tibial artery, uh, as you see in the middle bottom panel, we were able to advance the access wire in the posterior tibial artery. Remember, we were not able to achieve adequate visualization with that geography because of a limited amount of blood flow um, in these tibial vessels. What you see in the left-hand corner is a retrograde angiogram showing the posterior tibial artery and essentially shows that the vessel is occluded um, at the mid portion of the posterior tibial artery. The middle panel shows uh, the sheath in the superficial femoral artery and we scan down all the way to see our 014 wire navigating uh, the occluded segment of the posterior tibial artery. 
To the right of the screen, what you notice the operator did at that time is we accessed and crossed the posterior tibial artery. Also, we accessed and crossed the anterior tibial artery, performing a Schmidt modified the Schmidt technique in the dorsal spinous artery and anterior tibial artery because there was no meaningful blood flow. As we're advancing the wire under fluoroscopic guidance, in this case here, we're using an 018 V18 wire you can see that the wire traversed the occluded segment of the anterior tibial artery and crossed into what we think is the popliteal artery. Now, a word of caution here, sometimes you can advance the wire in retrograde fashion and not necessarily be in the true lumen. That's number one. Number two, we still don't have a lumen in the popliteal artery because this is still occluded. Um, and finally, uh, even if you're in subentimal plane, you want to make sure that all of your wires are in the same subentimal plane. So let's review here a little bit uh, our communication or where we are. So you can see that uh, you have four access points, one in the right common femoral artery where our destination pinnacle seven French traditional axis up and over to the left common femoral artery is there. The next access point was the modified Schmidt access point within the distal segment of the occluded left superficial femoral artery where there is a four French terumal precision sheath and there's a wire floss through it from there to uh, the seven French sheath. And finally, you have two sheets, uh, cooked to be pillow sheets, 2.9 French, one in the posterior tibial artery and one in the anterior tibial artery, dorsalis pedis artery. I want to mention also that the uh, dorsalis pedis artery and anterior tibial artery access was also a modified Schmidt technique because there was no meaningful blood flow in the dorsalis pedis artery or the anterior tibial artery. So what's next? So we have to connect the posterior tibial artery to the uh, right common femoral artery. How we're going to do that? What you see here is we're advancing our wire from the posterior tibial artery and we're moving toward our axis in the left superficial femoral artery. Remember, we were able to floss our wire from the right common femoral artery to the SFA. If we manage to connect uh, the wire from the SFA to the posterior tibial artery, at least we were able to achieve one vessel runoff for this patient. So this is essentially what we're trying to do. We're trying to establish one vessel runoff from the right common femoral artery to the patent segment of a posterior tibial artery. How are we going to do that? Well, this is exactly what you see here. Once the uh, SFA axis has served its purpose, we are removing the sheath. What you see also is uh, that we have advanced a wire over our 014 wire to the SFA axis. That's the dot that you see under the operator fingers. In the middle panel, you see that we removed the wire axis from the SFA, and we have a balloon to essentially inflate it and tamponade the access point within, uh, uh, within the thigh area. Now, originally there is no meaningful blood flow. However, that does not mean uh, you should not be prepared to tamponade the area since uh, you will treat the occlusion within the uh, proximal SFA, uh, blood flow might uh, increase in that area. To the right of the screen, what you see here, what you see is the balloon being inflated from the contralateral right common femoral artery. And we're essentially trying to do a modified CART technique, again, connecting the SFA axis to the posterior tibial artery axis. And uh, as you see here, uh, you, have two, you have two wires, one wire from the anterior tibial artery where the, uh, where the wire appears to be looped. And then you have an 014 wire from the posterior tibial artery and you can see the wire being tunneled through the navicross catheter that's advanced from the right common femoral artery. So at this point, we have achieved our goal, which is essentially connecting our right common femoral artery to the right posterior tibial artery access point the wire is flossed from the right groin to the left posterior tibial artery access point. The next step is us performing balloon angioplasty, balloon angioplasty of the SFA, balloon angioplasty of the popliteal artery. And what you see here, we were able also to tunnel a wire from the anterior tibial artery into the right common femoral artery. So now we were able to essentially connect the right common femoral artery access point to the, to the left dorsalis pedis artery slash AT and left posterior tibial artery. And what you see in the right panel, us performing balloon angioplasty of the anterior tibial artery. Now, we wanna see what needs to be done for this patient. So these are angiographic pictures after simply balloon angioplasty. So to the left of the screen, you see the flow in the SFA in the popliteal artery. Clearly, you can see the dissection in the, the, at the adductor's canal area. 
uh, there is no perforations, there is no contrast extravasation at the Schmidt access point. And to the right of the screen, you can see the flow within the anterior tibial artery and the posterior tibial artery. You see the dissection involving the takeoff of the anterior tibial artery as the angiogram is playing off. I made the decision at that point to proceed with uh, stenting of the dissected areas. And here we are faced with a challenge. You can see the spiral dissection involving the proximal and osteosuperficial femoral artery. However, you can see also that the flow to the deep femoral artery is not compromised. This goes back to our point that we made earlier in terms of crossing a medial to lateral, uh, crossing medial um, or crossing away from the deep femoral artery. So this way the plaque shift happens away from the deep femoral artery. In the middle panel, you see us deploying a self-expanding stent. In this case, we chose the Sopera stent made by Abbott. You can see the stacking technique uh, or stacking the struts of the Sopera stent. And to the right panel, you can see that there is still dissection, spiral dissection involving the takeoff of a superfic superficial femoral artery. There is a dilemma because obviously there is a high takeoff of a superficial femoral artery. We made the controversial decision um, of deploying a supera stent across the uh, joint. This patient was not a surgical candidate, uh, has a lot of fibrotic uh, tissue involving the left groin. Um, so we made the decision, since this is a limb salvage case, to proceed with deployment of a self-expanding stent, supera stent. To the right of the screen, you can see uh, the angiographic result with the TIMI-3 patent blood flow all the way to the popliteal artery. We proceeded with interrogating the blood flow in the posterior tibial artery, popliteal artery, and you immediately noticed that the blood flow uh, through the posterior tibial artery is very good. However, what you notice here right away is we're unable to see the anterior tibial artery. We have to make a decision at this point. Do we proceed with uh, pursuing the anterior tibial artery again, um, or uh, do we, uh, do we, are we just satisfied with uh, blood flow through the posterior tibial artery? We certainly improved blood flow significantly um, in this case so far.